Okay, so in today's video we're going to have a look at averages from a table. Now we're going to primarily focus on looking at the mean from a table. We're going to have a look at like, uh, tables like the one on the screen at the moment and we're going to have a look at grouped frequency tables as well and look at the difference between working out the means in both of those. And then we're going to finish off at having a look at some median mode and potentially just discuss some range from a table as well. So we're going to have a look at the whole, the whole of the concept of this topic and all the different averages that you can look at from a table. But we're going to kick things off looking at mean, so grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, uh, and we're gonna get started. We've got this one example to have a look at and then you can have a go at a few. So this question says, Rosie has 10 boxes of drawing pins. She counted the number of drawing pins in each box and this table gives some information about her results. And then we can see in the table, we've got the boxes with 29 drawing pins there. There was two of those. The boxes with 30 drawing pins, there were five of those, and so on. 31 where there were two, and 32 drawing pins, there was only one. And it says, work out the mean number of drawing pins in a box. Now we know hopefully when we're working out the mean, you add up the total of all the different um, boxes of drawing pins here and we divide by how many boxes there are. And this question's nice, it actually tells us that there's 10 boxes. So we know that we just need to get the total and divide by 10. Now obviously this information is within a table, so we don't have our normal list, although we could actually imagine what we would do if we had a list. Now if we did have a list here, now 10's okay, but once we start getting to tables where there's 80, 100 things in the table, we won't want to do it in this particular way, but just so you have an understanding of how and why we do the process we do, we'll have a look at this first one. So we've got two boxes of drawing pins that have 29 in, so we'd have two 29s, so 29 and 29. And then we've got five with 30 in, so 30, 30, 30, you can already see it's actually already a bit annoying having to write these all out, 30 and 30, there we go. We've got two with 31, and another 31, and we've got one with 32 in. So I could just give you this list here and say work out the mean, and what you'd do is you just add them all up and we would divide by 10. So with this particular table, we could actually just take that approach, it'd be nice and easy to do so, but obviously, as I said, as they get a bit, a bit trickier, we're not really gonna wanna take that approach. But essentially, we're gonna have a look at what the totals of all the numbers are, and what we're gonna do, obviously, because they're categorized, what we're gonna have a, look, have a look at is we're gonna look at the total of these 29s to start with. Now, there's two of them, so two 29s, we could add those together and we get a nice total there and that is 58 that total then we would have a look at the 30s and we'll add all of those up we've got 30 60 90 plus another two 120 150 so the total of those is 150 the total of the 31s is 62 and the total of that 132 there is 32 and then we can add them all together as groups now what we're going to do is we're going to take that away from the list and have a look at it from the table so we'll get rid of all of that and we'll do it from the table here. So we've got two 29s. Now all we have to do is times the 29 by two, and that gives us their total there. So two lots of 29, we've already said, is 58. Then we've got 30 lots of the, well, five lots of the 30s, and that was 150. And uh, we've got two lots of the 31, that's 62. And one lot of the 32 and that gives us 32 as the total there. Now, for, throughout these questions, they could be calculator, they could be non-calculator. I am just gonna use a calculator. Well, I've gotta be honest, I think this question is a good non-calculator question, but as long as you know the process, obviously, if it was a calculator question, it would be quite nasty numbers, one that you wouldn't be expected to do without a calculator, but they could be non-calculator as well. And here's an example of one, I think, where this could be non-calculator. So let's have a look. Now we've got all these totals for each row. Um, we can actually just add those all together. So 58 plus 150 plus 62 plus 32 gives us the overall total there of 302 for the total number of drawing pins in all these boxes. Now we already know we're gonna divide by 10 as it says in the question up there that there's 10 boxes, but if we didn't actually have that piece of information, we could find that because we've got the total frequency just here. And if we do two plus five plus two plus one, we get a total of 10 boxes. So all we need to do to finish this question off to get our value of the mean is we're gonna do 302, the total of all the drawing pins and divide it by the 10 boxes. And as you can see, that was obviously be why this might be a non-calculator question because dividing by 10 is nice and easy. We just hop the decimal in and we get the answer 30.2 for our mean. So in terms of a process there, look, we times across, we get all the totals for each category, we add them all up and divide by how many things there are, and in this case the things is the 10 boxes, and we get that just by adding up the frequency column down here. So there we go, get the total, divide by the total frequency, and you have got your mean. Now you're going to have a go at a couple of questions, so here are some for you to have a go at. Okay, so there's two different questions here with two different contexts. So have a read of the question, have a go at working out the mean for each one, and we'll go over the answer in a sec. So pause the video there and we'll go over the answers. 
Okay, so this first one, we've got Andy did a survey of the number of cups of coffee some pupils in his school drunk yesterday, work out the mean number of cups of coffee drunk. So we're going to times them all across to start with and we'll get all the totals for each of our rows. So 2 times 1 is 2, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 5 is 20, 5 times 8 is 40, and 6 times 5 there is 30. And if we add those all up, 2 plus 9 plus 20 plus 40 plus 30 gives us a total of 101. There we go. And if we add up our total frequency, as it doesn't tell us in the question how many people there are, 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 8 plus 5 gives us a total of 22 people. There we go. So this is definitely a non-calculator question. We're not going to do 101 divided by 22. So let's just do that on the calculator. 101 divided by 22. And let's see what we get. 101 divided by 22. And we get the answer of 4.590. Let's see if I can squeeze that in. 4.590. And there's a recurring decimal above the 9 and the 0. So there's a recurring pattern of 90s there. And that would be my answer. 4.590. And there we go. Okay, obviously it doesn't say to round it or anything like that, so I'll just leave it as it shows on the calculator, writing down all those digits if there's any more than that. Now as well, this uh, question here, just think about the logic. It does say work out the mean, which is the average, and four and a half makes sense, okay? Look at the number of cups of coffee drunk. They ranged from two down to six, and it's somewhere in between there, 4.59, that makes sense, as it looks like between four and five is the most common amount of uh, cups of coffee drunk there as well, so that makes sense. On to our next one. Let's times these across. So it's about goals scored in 20 matches. 20 students actually scored goals for the hockey team. And it says this table gives the information about the number of goals they scored. So 1 times 9 gives us 9. 2 times 3 gives us a total of 6. 3 lots of 5 is 15. And 4 lots of 3 is 12. And if we add those all together, 12 plus 15 plus 6 plus 9 gives us a total of 42. There we go, and we already know there's a 20 total here, so we could just add those up, but just double check they do add up to 20. And then we go and we can finish this off. We've got off a total of 42, 20 people to divide by, and 42 divided by 20 is 2.1. And again, looking at the context of the question, 2.1 goals makes sense. There we go, and there is our final answer and our mean for that second question. Now let's have a look at some group frequency. Okay, so that group, word that I've mentioned, grouped frequency, refers to these categories here. So this question is about 40 friends and how long they took to get to work. So we've got a category there, and that means from naught to 10 minutes, including the 10. Okay, obviously not including the naught there, because no one's going to take zero minutes. So it's anywhere between zero and 10. And obviously that little symbol there, the equal to symbol, tells us it can actually be equal to the 10. The one below then, look, starts on 10, but obviously it's got that not equal to 10 there. So obviously anyone that's on 10 minutes exactly would go into at the category above where it can be equal to 10. So that can't be equal to 10, but it's between 10 and 20, and again, it can be equal to 20. And that sort of pattern there just follows all the way down the table. The next one, 20 to 30, not including 20, but does include the 30. Okay, so that's what those little inequalities are, those little groups. And it's called grouped fre frequency, but these little things here are also called classes, or it's called a class. Okay, and think about that word class. If you're in a class at school, that refers to the group that you are in. So another word for group is a class, and we're going to refer back to that word later on in the video. So when it comes to this sort of question here, basically we don't know how many of these three people um, well, where they're actually at in terms of their minutes. They could be one minute, two minute, three minute, any sort of um, subcategory of that. So they could be four minutes, 50 seconds. It could be anything within naught to 10 minutes. So essentially we don't actually know the times within the group. Although we know that there are three people within that group, we don't know their exact times. So the question down here, look in this final line, it just says it's something different in the words. It says work out an estimate for the mean time taken. And we're working at an estimate because we obviously don't actually know their exact times. If we did know their exact times, we could calculate or work out the mean. But for this particular question, we're going to estimate the mean. So in terms of actually making an estimate, what we're going to do is we're going to make a guess for these people's times, obviously an educated guess. Between 0 and 10, the midpoint, or in the middle of that, is 5. So we're going to use 5 instead of any, any of these random numbers in between 0 and 10. So we'll say, OK, 10, 5's in the middle, so we'll use that. In between 10 and 20, that in the middle of that is 15, so we'll use 15 for that category. 25 between 20 and 30, 35 between 30 and 40, 
and 45 between 40 and 50. Now I've assumed there that you can spot those in your head. If you can't, let's have a look at this category, for example, 20 to 30, you could just add together 20 and 30. You could do 20 plus 30 and then halve your answer. And again, 20 plus 30 is 50, halve it is 25, and it gives you that midpoint. So if they are a little bit more complicated and you can't spot them in your head, there's a little trick for you just to find the midpoint, okay? And you can do always use that to find the midpoint of two numbers as well. Now we just follow the same process. So now I've got my estimated midpoints or my estimated times in the context of this question. I'm just going to times them all across like we did before. And the rest of the process is basically exactly the same. So 5 times 3 is 15, 8 times 15 is 120, 25 times 11, and I am doing these on the calculator, is 275, 9 times 35 gives us 315, and 45 times 9 gives us 405. Now there we go, there's the total of all our times for each category, and again we're just going to add those all together and get our overall total, so add 405, 315 plus 275 plus 120 plus that 15 sitting on the top and that gives us a total of 1130 and that is our overall total there now again this question does say there's 40 friends but again just double check and add that all together down the bottom here and the total frequency there does add up to 40 so it's all okay and again we just finish this off finishing off the working out just like we did before we've got our big total 1130 and we're going to divide that by the 40 people and see what we get for our estimated mean. So dividing that by 40 on the calculator gives us a final value of 28.25. Obviously the context of this question is about minutes, so it's 28.25 minutes, but that is our final answer there. And again, just looking back at the table, 28.25 makes sense. It's somewhere in this middle category here, which is also the most popular, okay? Obviously there's 11 there, so that would make sense that the average or the mean would be within that category as well. So there we go, that's how to get an estimated mean from what we call a grouped frequency table. Don't be put off by that word grouped frequency, it just refers to these tables here where we have a class interval there and not actually just a number within that. Okay, so that is how you work out an estimated mean, and here's a couple for you to have a go at. Okay, so there's two questions there, so have a go, pause the video, and we'll go over the answer in a sec. Okay, so this first one. First of all, the midpoints, we've got 5, 15, 25, 35, and 45, and we're going to times all of those by the frequency. There we go. Right, so 5 times 2 is 10, 8 times 15 is 120, 25 times 9 is 225, 7 times 35 is 245, and 4 times 45 is 180. There we go. And if we add those all together, let's see what we get. 180 plus 245 plus 225 plus 120 and add the 10 and that gives us an overall total of 780. Now again it does say in the question look, that there's 30 plants in this particular question. So if we add those all together we've got 30 and we just need to get our mean now, our estimated mean. So we're going to do 780, our overall total. We're going to divide that by the 30 plants and let's see what we get. 780 divided by 30 gives us a total or an estimated mean here, sorry, of 26, there we go. And then again, thinking about the logic look, that sits within this category here, which again is the most popular. So again, that makes sense, and it's somewhere in the middle there. So that would make sense there for our final answer. So 26 is our mean. Moving on to our next one. We've got 55 in the middle of 50 and 60. I'm gonna put these to the left this time. 55, we've got 65, 75, 8, that does not say 75, 75, 85 and 95 in the middle of that last category. Again, times these all along. We're going to get some quite big numbers for this one. Let's have a look. So we have 5 times 55, and that's 275. There we go. We've got 9 times 65, which is 585. There we go. 22 times 75, which is 1650. 27 times 85, which is 2,295. 
There we go, and 17 times 95, which gives us 1,615. And you can see from this example here, this particular question, why we definitely wouldn't want to use a list, okay? Because obviously we've got quite a lot going on in here. Now, if we add those all together, 1,615, add the 2,295, add the 1,650, add the 585, and finally add the 275, we get a total of 6,420. Now again, we need our actual overall total amount of plants here. So if we add up our frequency column, 17 plus 27 plus 22 plus nine plus five, gives us a total of 80. So we are, we have a total of 80. So working out our mean for this, we've got our overall total, which is 6,420, and we're gonna divide that by our 80 there. And if we work that out, 6420 divided by 80, we get our estimated mean, which is 80.25. There we go. And again, thinking about the context of the question, 80.25 is in this category here, which again just happens to be the most popular. So there we go, that's how you get your estimated mean from a table. So what we're gonna have a look at now is some of the other averages. Primarily we're gonna look at mode and median, but we're also gonna have a little quick discussion about the range as well, and the range is quite nice and easy. Okay, let's have a look then. Okay, so we look, just looked at this question previously. Okay, it was about Bob asked to each of 40 friends how many minutes they took to go to, go to work. The table shows some information about his results. And we're gonna, f and uh, obviously we're gonna look at these in separate parts. So we're gonna start by finding the class interval that contains the median. Now again, that language there, class interval, just means the group, okay, this one here that contains the median, the group, the interval, is just the language for, the, the, for it being between zero and 10. So the interval for that is between zero and 10. So the class interval is the group between two numbers, so basically, if we turn that into sort of simpler words. So we're looking at the class interval that contains the median. Now the median, hopefully you already know, is the middle number. So what we're gonna have a look at actually is how we get the middle number from a table. Now it says up here that there's 40 friends, again, if it didn't, we know how to find that now we can go down to the bottom and find that this 40. Now when we're finding the median of anything, the statistical way of doing that is we add one and half it. If you think about a little bit of a logic here, if we have five people, let's just uh, have draw a little picture here, if we have five people standing in a row, oh dear I've committed to drawing five people now, All right here we go, let's draw them as best as I can. Okay, five amazing little drawings there and we wanna find where the middle person is. Obviously, logically, we know that that middle person is this one right here, the third one along. But if you take five people and divide that by two, you don't get three, you get 2.5. So it doesn't actually find that middle person. So actually, the logic we have to take is before we halve it, okay, we have to add one. So five plus one, which is six. Then we divide it by two, so six divided by two, tells us that the middle person is the third. And that is correct, look, one, two, three, our middle person, four, five. So when we're finding the median, hopefully that is a nice little simple example as to why you add one, but we have to add one first and then actually halve it to find out where our middle value is gonna lie. So let's have a look. Now we've got 40 people, so 40 plus one is 41. And then we're gonna halve that. So 41 divided by two, is 20.5. So we're gonna try and find where the 20.5th number is, and that seems a little bit weird. Sometimes it's a bit easier just to have 40, but mathematically that's not actually correct, and it's not gonna be a good way to learn this as it progresses onto other topics when we start to look at things like box plots and stuff like that, and stem and leaf diagrams and all that sort of stuff. So let's have a look, the 20.5th number. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something called a cumulative frequency here. So what I mean by that is we're gonna do a running total down the table. So as it stands on this first column, look, we've got a total of three. Once we add in this extra eight here, well, three plus eight gives us 11 people in total now. So we've not quite got to that 20.5th person. Not that we can have half a person, but we're just in terms of our medium, we've not got to that 20.5th number yet. Once we add the 11 in, that gets us to 22, and that has just gone beyond the 20.5th number. So there we go, that 20.5th person is somewhere within that little category there. Okay, obviously not in the category above because we're only at 11 people by then, but as we progress down the list, that 20.5th uh, sort of person there is gonna be in that third category. So that leaves us with a median 
in this category here. So our median class interval is going to be that 20 to 30 right there. And when we write down our answer for that, so for part A, we would literally just write down exactly what is written right there. So 20 with our inequality to 30. And there we go, there's our median class interval. Okay, so all we do is we get our total, add one half it, and then we count down our list using cumulative frequency to figure out where that person actually is. And we just wait till we've gone just beyond it, and that's the category that they're in. The next part here, the, mo the modal class interval, is a lot easier. Write down the modal class interval. Now that word modal just stands for the mode. There we go. But because it's referring to a class interval, again, just one of these groups, it, we use the word modal. Okay, so write down the modal class interval. Now that's nice and easy to find. All we have to do is look down our frequency and see which one is the most popular. Okay, the mode is the most frequent. Okay, if we write that down, most frequent or the one that's the most popular. Okay, I tend to use that word popular rather than frequent, but that is the mathematical language there, the most frequent. And if we look down our table, we've got 3, 8, 11, 9, and 9. 11 there is the most frequent, okay, the most, uh, the most common. So our modal class interval is also that particular category there, which is this, ends up being the same as our median in this particular question. So our part B there, we'd write down the same thing. We'd say 20 to 30 and that is our modal class interval, our most frequent, okay? And this same logic applies when it's a non-grouped frequency table. Obviously, when it's non-grouped frequency, it won't say write down the modal class interval or the median class interval. It would just say write down the median or write down the mode, okay? Okay, but obviously, this is a little bit trickier when you've got the, to write down the actual interval, but the process is exactly the same on the other table as well. So we're only gonna practice on these particular tables because they're a little bit trickier, um, just in terms of what you have to write down. But on, honestly, both the questions are exactly the same here, um, but I've just chosen to actually go with these ones as they're a little bit more popular when you're asking to look for the median or look for the mode. Okay, so that is how you actually go about doing that. Uh, in terms of the actual range, the range is quite nice and easy. I'm not gonna actually get you to have a go at these because they're so nice and simple. Obviously, when you're looking at the range, you just do the biggest, take away the smallest, and our biggest time, take away our smallest time. Obviously, if there were numbers in here, then we could just do the biggest one down here, take away the smallest one up here. But as they are um, classes or groups, we can't do that, so we estimate the range. We would do the midpoint, the 45 midpoint, take away the five midpoint up here, so to estimate the range, that is an estimated range here. We'd do 45, take away five, and our range would be 40. Really nice and simple to work out the range, but we're gonna focus on median and mode. But that is how you work out all the averages from one of these tables. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna have a practice on working out the median and a practice on working out the mode, okay, and figuring out those, so here they are. Okay, so there's two questions here. Now, hopefully you've been writing these down, and if you have, you've already got these tables actually written down somewhere, because these are the last two that you just looked at. So those last two tables that hopefully you've written down, I want you to have a look. I want you to find the class interval that contains the median for both of them, and also I want you to write down the modal class interval for both these tables. So pause the video there, have a go, and we'll go over the answer in a sec. Okay, so starting off on this one on the left then. I'm gonna start off finding the median. So if we add these all together and see how many we've got there. So we've got two plus eight, plus nine, plus seven, plus four. And that adds up to a total of 30. So to find our median, we'll add one, which is 31, and divide that by two. So we end up with 15.5, and that's where our median is gonna lie. So if we do our running total going down the table, we have two here, plus the eight, that gets us to 10, plus the nine, that gets us to the 19, there we go. So we've gone beyond 15, so our median is gonna be within this category, and that is 20 to 30 there. So I'm just gonna write this at the top here. Let's go for our median, which is gonna be 20, there we go, to 30. And now we'll also look at our mode, okay? Obviously we are looking at the median class and the modal class. I'm just gonna shorten that down just as I write these for you. Right, so on to our next little part then. Let's have a look, let's go for a different color. We are gonna find our modal class, and a modal class is nice and easy. We just have to look at our frequencies and see which one's most common. So two, eight, nine, seven, four, nine there is the most common. So that's gonna be our most frequent or our modal class. There we go. Now you've obviously just gotta be careful. Obviously our mode isn't nine. Nine represents how many are in that category. But the actual category is on the left here. So our most common category 
is also that 20 to 30. And just a little side note here, they're not always the same. It's not always that the median is also the mode. It just so happens that these are obviously are ending up being, being the same here, but they could be different. Onto the one on the right, let's have a look. So let's get our total. We've got obviously larger numbers in this one. We've got five plus nine plus 22 plus 27 plus 17. And that gives a total of 80. So if we add one, it gives us 81. And half of that is 40.5. There we go, so that's where our median's gonna be. So counting down the list there, we've got five plus nine, which is 14, plus the 22, which gets us to 36. Still not got to our 40.5, but once we add the 27, 36 plus 27 is 63. So we've gone beyond the 40.5 there. So that is where our median's gonna lie and that is the 80 to 90 category. So our median, our median class is 80 to 90. There we go, and that's our median. Now look at our mode. Let's have a look which one's our most common. We've got five, nine, 22, 27, and 17, and there we go, as it turns out, look, the mode is also in exactly the same place. There we go, so that's our mode or our most frequent, so our modal class is this one on the left just here. So I'm not gonna write that down again, Let's just, I, just, I don't think there's actually anywhere I can fit this. Let's just write it up here, so our mode, there we go, we would just write 80 to 90, obviously using our inequality there that's shown in the table. And there we go, that is our mode for that second question. And there we go, that is how you find all the averages from a table. Obviously you could also look at the range, and just, just to finish this off very quickly, our range for this first table, look, we could have five in the middle and 45 there. So our range would be 45, take five, and our estimated range, sorry there, would be 40. And our estimated range for this one on the right, look, we would have 95 in the middle of that one, 55 in the middle of that one, and 95 take 55 would give us an estimated range of 40. There we go. And there would be our estimated ranges. There we go. And they turned out to be the same number for both questions. So, but there we go. That is finishing all of that off. That is all the averages. We looked at mean from a normal frequency table, mean from a group frequency table, and then obviously looking at the median and the mode and the range from these grouped frequency tables. And again, don't forget that if you do have a normal frequency table, it's exactly the same process. But when you give your mode and give your median, you won't be given, a, you won't be giving a modal or median class. You will just be giving a modal number and a median number to represent those uh, those averages there. But there we go, that's the end of the video. Hopefully you found that helpful and useful. If you did, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.